What is up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. It is time to go over the upgrade predictions for the roster update number six. And I think it's going to be a big one this week, so I'm really excited to dive right in. I will let you know that on Twitch, twitch.tv slash sport, if you are a subscriber to my channel, you can get access to my full list of upgrade candidates. I have 95 names this week. For this show, I've got 35 for you, so I like to give you guys a nice sampling, let you know what you might be getting if you are interested in subscribing. But even if not, you got some names here that you can definitely get into and increase your stubs count. Let's again start bottom up. And I'm going to start just doing kind of the, the one stud common of the week. I don't want to get too bogged down in the commons moving up. Um, I know those aren't the ones where they're real big money makers. Maybe I'll get into more of them as we get closer to stage four affinity being released because that's the biggest use for these guys. You invest in them as commons if they go into the high bronze or maybe even silver like this guy could. Um, the affinity points that you could get for the price that you're paying for them is just astronomical. So let's start with a guy that you might have heard me talk about before, but he didn't get a single upgrade last week, and I couldn't believe it. And that is Devin Williams for the Milwaukee Brewers. This guy is a brilliant reliever. He's got nasty stuff. I think they need to do a full rework of his card. This guy was a prospect. I remember listening, uh, hearing about his name. You know, a couple of years ago, you know, he's 24, so it's not like he's been around forever. But as he was coming up, reading through prospect lists, he was a guy who was expected to become a, a decent starter. Didn't quite work, but he has definitely fulfilled promise as a reliever. And he's kind of their right-handed answer to Josh Hader. And it's unfortunate that they're not really doing that well this year because to see Devin Williams and Josh Hader as a back-to-back -back combo right-lefty in the playoffs would have been really fun. I mean, they could still make it with a run, but... If you really look at it, the talent just doesn't seem to be there. I've got him going all the way up to a 72. Again, if they do a full rework of his card based on the performance that he's been having this year, because it is very, it, it is supported by the skills that he's showing, then I think that uh, an upgrade this big, especially because they haven't given him one uh, yet, is very much possible. In fact, let me give you a little taste of his numbers here. Um, he has got a 64, .64 ERA and a .71 whip. And I'll give my normal disclaimer. I know ERA is not reflected on the card. So be careful when you're looking at somebody's ERA and thinking that that's a reason that they should get upgraded because that alone does not tell us anything. I use it to highlight just how brilliant he's been, how few runs he's given up. But he's pitched 14 innings with 29 strikeouts, y'all. That's an 18.6 K9. I think it's a little bit better than a 48 uh, mark here and 3.9 walks which is not an uh, an excellent number but it's very good for a reliever and when you're striking out that many guys you can live with a with four walks per nine point six homers homers don't really matter for us in diamond dynasty but then 2.6 hits he's given up four which means he and josh Hader have combined to give up four hits on the year yes josh Hader's not given up a hit on the year can you believe that anyway i think a big big upgrade here uh, is due. They need to make that change up just a disgusting pitch with like 99 control and 99 break. I'm, I'm barely even kidding about that. I'm, I'm a little bit hyperbolic, but somewhere in the 90s for both of them because Pitching Ninja keeps featuring it and it's a disgusting pitch. Anyway, moving on. Got to include this guy. He had the big breakout game yesterday for the Giants. If you were watching that, just the shellacking that they put on the Rockies. In Coors Field, Alex Dickerson went off with three home runs. You can see here his price is way out of line for a normal bronze. So if you have some right now, you might just sell on hype um, because obviously you don't want to buy at this price. But it's going to be interesting to see exactly where he goes. One three-homer game, and I think it was a five-hit game total, can really change the dynamics of your line on the year. So he, you know, he literally wasn't performing that well before this, but that game counts. Just because it's confined to one game doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve some weight and that they shouldn't give him an upgrade. I've got him going up to a 72, and then we can kind of monitor him and see if he continues to perform well and maybe go up to a silver. But that's that's really about it for Dickerson. Let's move over to the Braves and talk about a starting pitcher that they have. Now, starting pitching has been a challenge for them this year. Obviously not with Max Fried. We saw he's gone up to gold, and we might be talking about him a little bit later. But other than that, injuries have ravaged them. But they might have found something big here in Ian Anderson. In fact, the market agrees. Jeez, 1110 slash 588 is insane. I've got him going up to 73. He's had two starts. He's been brilliant in both. And boy, do I wish I had some. Although I will say, this is a pretty flippable card right now, too, where you can just buy one and, and sell it and just kind of keep flipping it and just taking the couple hundred stubs, depending on your patience for it. 
don't get too hung up on uh, or don't get too committed into doing it though because people will bring the price down if there's too much action on it the price will start to come down until he gets that upgrade part of this this price here is not only that he's going to get an upgrade but that he's also a new card i think he came in i'm not going to go all the way back out to the roster update and see when i think he came in last week though i don't think i don't think he had a live series card before that next up oh and of course i backed out every episode it has to happen. It's just, it, there's just no way it's not going to happen. But let's talk about Tyler Molly, uh, who I believe I've had on a recent update. Now you see he's not even in SP right now. So he's probably going to get moved back to SP, go up a few points just based on that. I think there's like a four or five point shift just moving back to SP without any sort of skills change. So let's just say that that's going to be four points. That'll put him at a 72. And then I've got him getting, actually, I only had him going to a 74, but I didn't realize that he was at RP. I think he could feasibly go silver now. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I'm going to make a change here on the fly because I forgot that he was he was shifted back to RP. Uh, he's pitching tonight. Now, he doesn't have any strikeouts. He has five innings, four hits, three runs, two walks, zero strikeouts. So it's like, it's an all right start. We'll see how much he continues to go. He is still pitching right now in the top of the sixth, although Brad Miller's up who hit a home run off of him. Or no, Brad Miller's on deck. Excuse me, Paul Goldschmidt's up. We're actually going to talk about both of those gentlemen a little bit later. Anyway. I think Tyler Molly has some silver upside here, despite today's strikeout list outing. He's been really good, and uh, when you factor in that the SP move is going to get him some points off rip, I think the skills will also get a much needed boost and move him into silver. So again, we're doing that one on the fly. I'm going to say that he's going to go to 75, 76 instead of the 74 that I had him for, and he just got Paul Goldschmidt to pop up. All right, let's move on to, oh, another one that I thought was destined to get an upgrade last week. But hey, we just stay patient. We don't get mad. We stay patient. Look at how cheap this guy is. You can go in and get a whole bunch. I don't even have that many. You know, I'm going to take all these single digit ones because I think that Framber Valdez is going silver. So at worst, I'll make a, I'll, I'll break even on, on these single digit ones. But his price will go up well beyond 100 once he goes to silver. Um, I do have Framber Valdez going from a 67 to a 75. That is a large upgrade, but he's been amazing this year. And the 24 BB9 has to go way up. The, the stamina needs to go way up. And now I did send a list over to SDS of candidates that deserve a stamina upgrade based on the fact that they're no longer kind of hybrid pitchers where they're in relief and starting. and they've uh, Or guys like Kenta Maeda who've gone much deeper into games this year because he's not with the Dodgers who take a lot of... Um, take a lot of great pains to make sure that his innings are limited because of the contract that they had him under. But Framber Valdez has been awesome for the, for the Astros this year. I see him getting an upgrade into 75. Now, back to that gentleman that I was just hinting at who actually did just strike out for the first strike out of the night for uh, Tyler Molly. It is Brad Miller. That's all right, though. He already has a homer. He's been absolutely on fire. And folks, I've got some excellent news. If you've ever used Brad Miller, now this year I've only used him for four plate appearances, so I can't really show off anything here. But if you've been using him, his card, any card, live series, specialty cards, whatever you got. I guess those are really only two things, specialty or live series. But you know that his swing is clean. It's awesome. He is one of the sneak tip bronzes in BR. His uh, specialty cards, last year he had a diamond player of the month card. You know, you know that Brad Miller rakes. Well, I've got great news, folks. Tops now put out a Brad Miller, which means he's in the pool. He's in the eligibility pool to get a tops now from SDS. And I hope, I hope that they do it because I need a diamond Brad Miller back in my life. I'll put him in the lineup instantly. I got him going up to a silver at a 75. He's been awesome this year. If you kind of look at what he did with Philly last year, when he earned that player of the month, He's carrying over some strong performance from then. Frankly, I thought that the the 70 mark that he got coming into the year was a little bit light because he's a quality hitter. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and clean my glasses while we're doing this because I got something on them that's driving me nuts. But he's been a great hitter. Uh, or I don't want to overstate. He's been a good hitter throughout the bulk of his career, and he's always good for a big run every year. Like I said, he got the player of the month last year. Uh, you go look in his career. If he doesn't have a great full season, there's always a, a multi-week, one-month, two-month span of high-quality work from Brad Miller. And look at that. He plays every position but catcher. If they put that on the tops now, Diamond, it's over. It's a wrap. It's a GG for everybody else. We're going to stay here with the uh, Cardinals and talk about Adam Wainwright. You can see there's a big split here right now to where you could go ahead and I'm going to put my orders up. 
Because why not? What, what, do I, what do I even need to stick around here for? Because even if he goes up to silver, which is where I have him projected going 72 to 75, I don't know that his price is going to go much higher than this. So why don't I just go ahead and cash out right now? Because I don't really need to go crazy. Again, you look at the split here. You can flip this card. You can buy some right now, flip them all night here on Thursday or on Wednesday while we wait for Thursday. By the way, I wanted to make a point with the Tyler Molly thing. I brought up how he's doing tonight. When they do a Thursday update, I don't know if they close it on Tuesday or if they still close it on Wednesday. When it's a standard Friday update, they close it on Wednesday. And I don't know if they just keep that same thing going for the Thursday upgrades or not. So um, I don't even know if Tyler's, Tyler Molly's outing tonight is going to count. It doesn't change anything about how I feel about his upgrade. Next up, this guy had an amazing outing this week against the Angels. I believe it was in Anaheim. And we're talking about Marco Gonzalez, who has a pretty hefty split as well. He's been great. Um, you know, they haven't had a lot of things go right this year. You know, really, Cal Seeger, Cal Lewis, Marco Gonzalez, a couple other players here and there, but nothing too crazy. They've been one of the lesser teams this year, but Gonzalez is not part of the reason why. Uh, he threw nine strong innings. I believe he gave him one run, so it was a complete game, but not the shutout. Pitched really well, though. I think it's time for him to go silver. He's not a big strikeout guy, but he does suppress hits and walks. I think he can get to silver. I don't see a major hold for gold candidate, though, because of the lack of strikeouts. And then our final new silver here that we're going to talk about is a big prospect, also in the AL West, excuse me, who we weren't sure about his playing time coming into the year. But this is why, this is for fantasy. When you believe in somebody's talent, you got to trust that the playing time will figure itself out. And it absolutely has for Kyle Tucker. He's playing every day. You see these plus 12s against lefties. He's actually killing lefties this year, which has been awesome. A lot of lefty-lefty crime. I got him going up to a 76, and I absolutely believe that there is a hold for gold candidacy here because of his diverse skill set. He can hit against righties and lefties. He plays solid defense. He has speed. It's all there. I think the clutch rating needs a look. Um, I think his vision's actually been better this year. Me, don't quote me on that. I'm actually going to go ahead and look that up while we're talking here because I don't know if Kyle Tucker's really brought the strikeout rate down to merit a big upgrade, but maybe a little one. I think he's in the mid-20s. Yeah, he's at 23%. That's down from 28%. So I think the vision can get up into the high 50s, low 60s in addition to everything else that needs a boost. I think his discipline needs to go up into the low 60s. And then, of course, with a 269 average, which is nice, 328 OBP and a 571 slug. He has six doubles, six triples, and six homers. That's devilishly good. And uh, I love what he's been doing. He's got four steals for you as well. And we need to get two more steals to get sixes just straight up across the board there for Kyle Tucker. He's going silver. All right, next up. Now we got some silver to silver upgrades, but they're going to be in that high silver range and it's going to be gold watch time for these guys. In fact, some of them may get gold and I may be underselling them. So you're going to really want to stay keyed in on these guys. First off is a guy that I didn't know anything about coming into the year. I knew who he was. It's a player I knew, but if you'd asked me about his profile, I could have told you that Jacob Stallings was a catcher and that's it. Literally, that's it. I did not know he was a, a defensive stud. I knew what team he was on, but the extent to which I knew things about Jacob Stallings was nil. But he's hitting remarkably well this year. He's already gotten an upgrade. I believe he was a 74. He moved into the 76 range here because of his batting average. He's continued to hit well with the batting average. I think he's going to go up to 77. Now, as far as getting to gold, the real key is going to be whether or not he can start to hit for some pop because he only has the one homer. But he's hitting 315 with a 398 uh, OBP, but a 411 slug. When your slug and your OBP are that close, there's not a lot of power going on. So I think he's kind of capped here. And if it wasn't for that elite defense, I don't think he'd even be silver yet. But I think he can get to 77, 78, kind of live around there. Um, as of last week, he was pretty cheap. He still is relatively cheap as far as an investment for team affinity, especially if he goes up a point or two, as long as he stays below 200. Earlier in the week, though, and, and over the past weekend, he was in the, the uh, 110 to 130 range. So I was investing in him and flipping him to get some of my team affinities up to get to the uh, future star cards because I was getting my Mike Trout, which I did complete. And I backed out again. Sweet. Going to happen 52 more times. Next up, let's go out to the AL Central and talk about a guy who finally returned. And, you know, it was a deserved hiatus. He, he brought it upon himself. Zach Plesak did, but with the trade of Mike Clevenger, they had to bring him back up. Now, if they hadn't brought him back up after that, then you'd have known that 
they hated him. Like they're angry with him. But if they but if they trade somebody like Clevenger and they still left Plesak down, then you know it was a wrap. But they brought him back up. Hopefully fences have been mended. Hopefully he's apologized to his teammates. His video that he put out was awful. I thought it made him look really bad. Hopefully he's understood why people were so upset with him. We don't need to get into all that for this upgrade here, though. He came back. He continued to pitch well. I got him for a two-point upgrade. And despite maybe some poor decision-making off the field, he makes a lot of good choices on the field. And I think with a 78 mark after this upgrade, he now is sitting very much in the gold range. Very similar to my boy Aaron Savali. So get your investments in. You can still have plenty of room to invest in Plesak and get upside there. Next up, we're going to go to my boy, Rake Cronenworth. I love Jake Cronenworth, man. This is one of my new favorite players in the league. Look at his price just continue to inch up. I cannot tell you how happy I have been about this whole thing. Now, this guy, even less than Jacob Stallings, um, did I know about him, really. The only way I learned about him was from the trade, the infamous trade that involved the slapdick prospect that Blake Snell talked about. Uh-oh. Did he just go yard? No, it's going to stay in. I thought Jose Garcia just went yard for Cincinnati. Um, but he was he was kind of the the least talked about piece in that deal. The the Tommy Pham, Hunter Renfro, Xavier Edwards, Blake Snell trade, even though Blake Snell wasn't in it. Um, but I looked up who he was. You know, we talked about him on the pod, on the podcast. He was a guy who could play both sides of the ball. He, he pitched a little bit last year. He could hit. He had a good plate profile where he took his walks, didn't strike out a lot, a little bit of pop, good speed. But other than that, I'm like, what's this guy going to do? You know, there, every position that he plays is blocked off. He could play some first. They had Eric Hosmer. He could play some second, Jake Jerks and Profar, even though Profar isn't that good. We knew that they wanted to at least give Profar a real shot. And then short and third, no chance with Tatis and Machado. So he was going to need injury of some sort to kind of figure to, to figure into the playing time. In comes a gastrointestinal issue for Eric Hosmer, that puts him on the sideline for like a week. They didn't quite they didn't want to IL him, but they just kind of sat him down for a bit. Cronenworth fills in, plays brilliantly, and then all of a sudden when when Hosmer comes back, like well we can't take this guy out of the lineup. So all of a sudden he starts taking some second base time. Profar's kind of mixing in. Then Tommy Pham gets hurt. Well, now, because they want to stay committed to Profar, I don't know why. No offense, Profar, but he just hasn't hit. Uh, they can put him in left field, and Cronenworth has now taken the second base job. So hopefully you've been investing with us, uh, in him with us, uh, in him with us. Yeah, from the jump there, because he's been awesome. And he's been such a financial boon to me, because I probably have placed, no joke, no joke, at least 500 orders uh, of Cronenworth, at least 500 buys, probably more because of how cheap he was coming up. And I used him for so many affinities. I used him for so many of the a uh, NL West ones. And then I believe their, their AL team is the Mariners. I don't remember whoever their AL counterpart is, but I basically single-handedly used Cronenworth to get myself up on the bruised dark Gratterall, to get myself up on the, um, uh, I think the Alec Thomas is the only one I don't have in in, Sandy, in uh, Arizona. The Ryan Rollison, the uh, um, Helio Ramos, and then of course um, you can't use him for you can't use him for the, the the team themselves. But anyway, I invested a ton in him, and the price that he had. I mean, not, now you can only invest for gold. Which, by the way, I have him going up to a seventy eight. But he after he got upgraded to silver, he cost one ten. I can't tell you how many shares I got. So I love Ray Cronenworth. And I wrote an article about him. And looking at everything, even in the small sample that we've had this year, I really think he has Ben Zobrist vibes. Now, he doesn't switch hit like him, but everything else, playing a bunch of different positions, having power and speed, having a great plate approach with the patience and, and the, the ability to not strike out, being a late bloomer, I think it's all there. So I think Ray Cronenworth is somebody that's going to become a, a real player that people are going to know about for the next several years. So I'm in on him as a hold for gold, getting him up to a 78 this week and just hold your shares. I'm going to hold these last 36. I've already done so much with him uh, that I'm just going to keep these 36 in, into gold and maybe even add a few more because you can still get them in the uh, 500s here. And we'll, we'll definitely take that all day long. Anyway, sorry, that was a big diatribe on him. We're going to stay here with 
San Diego and talk a quick bit about Eric Hosmer. Not a big fan of Eric Hosmer, if you know why. Like, it's not the end of the world. He just was a huge dickhead to one of my buddies, and unnecessarily so. And he just strikes me as kind of a dude bro who, uh, you know, whatever. That said, I'm not going to let a, a personal feeling uh, make me be blind to the fact that he deserves an upgrade and he's hitting very well this year so credit where it's due i've actually got him going up to a 79 he's been fantastic he's actually uh decided that power is going to be part of his game he's going to lift the ball for the first time ever he's like what i shouldn't hit 52 million ground balls that's bizarre and uh he's not he's not hitting ground balls he has seven homers in just 104 plate appearances i mean basically you can just do the easy math on that and multiply that by six that he's pacing for 42 over a full season. Now, that's not the way you should do it. That's 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 a rough estimate that doesn't account for the ebbs and flows of a season. But even if you lop 10 off of that, that would be 32. That'd be easily a career high, which is currently 25. And uh, he's hitting the ball in the air 16 15% more, or 15 percentage points uh, from 23 to 38%. Uh, he's hitting the ball harder. He's pulling it more. Those are all signs of power. So a lot of what he's doing is very believable. He's always been a, a strong contact guy, too. His contact's even better than we've seen in recent years, too. He was at 21 and 24% strikeout rate the last two years. He's at 14% this year. So he may be a dick, but everything that else that he's doing is completely viable. And I think Eric Hosmer is a hold for gold. And he's very affordable, too. He's actually more affordable than Rake. All right, now we're going to move out to Boston. He got traded, but he's not on his new team yet. And it's uh, Kevin Pillar. And Kevin Pillar is quietly having a solid year here. And I think he puts himself in a very much very much of a hold for gold here. I got him going up to a 79 first. But then when you go to Colorado, that's where you get that offensive spike. So even though I don't think he's like a great hitter, anytime you're in Colorado, you can spike some big things with your offense. So I think that alone makes him a, a, a premium hold for gold relative to if he had stayed in Boston. He'd still be a hold for gold even in Boston, but he really jumps up another level. And you might buy him now while he's still in a, a very affordable range before he goes up to 79 and gets put on Colorado because that will make people associate like, oh, well, now he's in Coors Field and he's at 79. I'm going to start bumping up the price. So get in now on Kevin Pillar if, if this is someone that interests you. And our last silver to silver might actually just go straight to gold to be honest i'm trying to i'm this is one where i'm trying to manage my heart with my brain because i am a huge fran mill reyes fan and i don't want to overdo it and get you guys too excited that he's going to go three four points to gold this week so i got him going up to a 79 he had a five hit game yesterday he's been awesome the defense obviously holds him back a bit or else he'd probably already be a gold um but he's not a good defender and he doesn't he doesn't add to that any at all this year because he dh's Another big, uh, interesting note. There's a Tops Now card out for Fran Mill because of the five hit. So in the next set of Tops Now, we could feasibly get Luke Voigt, Brad Miller, and Fran Mill Reyes. And maybe the Aaron Savale card. Now, I don't know how far back they go. I don't know if the Luke Voigt uh, is still in play. I don't know if it's only the recent you know, two weeks or whatever, however they do it. But I'm keeping the fingers crossed. We might just get player of the month cards for some of these guys too, but I'll take either. I love the Tops Now card art. I'm obsessed with Tops Now cards, but I don't sleep on, on player of the month cards too. I would gladly take that for any of these guys that I'm naming here. All right, now let's get into the money makers. Let's talk about the guys going up to gold. Now I have a mix here. I have some of the ones that the market's already super keen on, but I am going to make you aware of just in case. Um, and you can monitor and, and kind of decide what you want to do. Let's start with the Reds and talk about Jesse Winker. The, I'm pretty strong on him, even though it's a four-point boost. So you could still invest here a little bit. But I would I would not start from scratch on the investment here because there is some risk. If they don't go for it this week and you're investing in the seven in the high seven hundreds, you're already you're already only getting about just over two hundred potential investment. But because I feel strongly about it, it's close to a lock. There's never such thing as an automatic one. Well, there kind of is sometimes, and we'll actually talk about a couple of them. But I feel very good about Jesse Winker. As I say with some of these, if you're not in on them already, you should actually be, be hoping against people. <laughs> I, I don't know enough about craps to know the, the right terminology here, but isn't there a place, there's a way where you're like playing against the table and you're, you can be kind of the bad guy because of where you're placing your bets. 
that could you could do that in investments here and kind of root against guys like Jesse Winker going to gold because then their price tanks and you jump in and then you get in when he goes gold the the, the following week. But uh, please don't do that this week. I want my twenty three grand from uh, from Jesse Winker. Next up, staying in the central here, we have Ian Happ, who I think the market's pretty keen on as well. Don't even bother with this one right now. I mean, it, it it's too high. Like he's pretty he's pretty locked in too. Again, I guess if you if you like just guaranteed a couple hundred stubs, I mean not even two hundred guaranteed here with an eight fifteen uh, sell now. But if you like saying, hey, I'll just take ten shares and and get my one fifty per, depending on how high you have to put in the orders, I think he's a pretty 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 strong bet. Again, I'm I'm gonna refuse to say a lock just because I don't want to get myself in trouble. And like you said, he was a lock, and it's like. But I, I don't I can't say that because I don't know that they won't be a little squirrely. I do feel very strongly about Jason Hayward. He's next on our list. Both these guys feel very good to get to gold. If I had to only pick one though, I would pick Hap. Maybe just because I like him better. <laughs> Which that's not a great tiebreaker. But they're both performing well enough to get gold and get it this week. Let's stay in the central and talk about another Cardinal, Paul DeYoung, who again, man. Are all the golds this week kind of already known by the community? Let me see. Hang on. Let me get the uh, main list. I gotta get. I gotta give you guys one that isn't like already, already kind of tapped investment wise. Because I'm. I'm not. I'm not about that. I'm not about that life to just give you guys a bunch of guys that uh, that are already tapped for the market. All right. Let's see. Let's go look here. Let's go look here real quick. So yeah, Paul DeYoung, I think is gonna go. Uh, Okay, here we go. Reese Hoskins. Now, listen, BR folks, I'm sorry. Kyle, I'm sorry, dude. I think your guy's going gold. Now, it doesn't mean you can't still take him, but it's not the same thing. You love having a guy who kills for you at silver. It's like when I lost my Luke Voigt. That was a bummer. Although now he's inching up. He could feasibly go diamond, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, I'll go Reese Hoskins here. And I'll give you guys this one because I think he's hitting well enough to go gold this week. At worst, I think it goes 79 and then you stay invested and, and get them even cheaper. But there's still plenty of upside here to where you could actually invest in Reese Hoskins, unlike a few of the others. I do have one more automatic that I will that I will mention. Just, you know, the reason I mention these though too, if you're wondering like why I even include them, is just so the comments aren't like, what about Luis Robert? Like, duh, duh. This one is a lock. Like, there's just no way he's not going. The market agrees. Although you could already sell these you can make more than, uh, I, I'll get five more stubs than the quick sell price. <laughs> I don't have many uh, Luis Roberts. I had a few extras. I've actually been selling them over the course of, of the weeks when he spiked because uh, there's been more than one week where people thought he was going to go gold and he hasn't yet, but he's going this week. And then let's see. Let's talk about our Blue Jays guys because they're right on the cusp, both of them, Teoscar and Grichuk. And as you can see, there's pretty disparate prices. Teoscar, the market feels pretty confident on, and I agree with that. Uh, and I will tell you that on the main list, uh, give you another extra name here. I have Grichuk, but I only have him going up to a 79. I'm just playing it a little bit cautiously, just because I don't know if they're going to be ready to push both of them up to gold. I do think Teoscar is is a uh, damn near lock this week. But if you look at what Grichuk's doing, I mean... 287, 328, 557 with nine homers. I, I don't know how he isn't going gold as well, but I put him to a 79 for one reason. Let me go into his card real quick. For one main reason, because he's already strong against lefties and uh, he's worse against righties by rating and he's hitting 244 against righties. That's why I only put him at a 79 right now, but I do think you should invest in him for the more long term. Like he's probably not going to go this week, but if he has one good week against righties, he'll get there. So between the two, Teoscar's the one to go for. Hopefully you've already been in on Teoscar uh, because there's been plenty of opportunities to invest in him. And then let me see if there's just one more. Because again, I feel bad that so many of these are already pretty tapped. And I want to give you guys something to go for. Okay. Well, that's, by the way, that's what the 79s and 78s are for too, though. It, and that's why I focus a lot on those. And I give you guys a pretty good number of those because those are the next golds. And those are the ones that sometimes... I'm even light on and they get gold the week that we were talking about them going 78 or 79. So make sure that you're paying special attention to those. Uh, I think he's pretty, oh, you know what? 
Here's another one that, that might be a little bit off the radar. Staying on the Phillies. Yeah, Didi. Didi's even cheaper than Hoskins. So maybe pick your favorite Philly and go there. But I think I think Didi is uh, ready to go back to gold as well. He's been pretty quiet. It's kind. This one reminds me of the Zach Wheeler thing, and I don't want to get caught uh, missing the missing the jump the way I did with Zach Wheeler because he just he wasn't a standout performer. He was just good every week, so he didn't hit any of my my thresholds that I usually look at to to identify somebody who's going to get going get get an upgrade to gold. Um, so Didi, you look at it, it's 279, 344, 486. That's not eye popping, but it's good and it's very much in line with his 2018. And he was a disaster last year in 82 games, but I think they can kind of wash that out. They had to include it a little bit this year just in case it was the start of a negative trend. But I think we're past the fact that, hey, that was a washout return from Tommy John. He's back. He's solid. We got to get him to gold. Let me take a look at his splits real quick to see where he's more likely to get the boosts. And you know what? He's got an 842 OPS against righties and an 808 against lefties. So he should get love across the board. I think the contact against righties is the, the big jumper here and the power against lefties. Those are the two that are going to get him. So there you go. Sorry, I, I, all those other names I had, they were just they were pretty much tapped outside of a, a couple hundred stubs. This is one where you can still invest in from scratch and still expect to get a pretty hefty profit. All right, now let's talk about some gold to golds setting up our next series of diamonds. And I mentioned him a little bit earlier. And it is indeed Max Fried, a guy that we were big on going to gold at the very beginning of the season. He's gotten there for us. He's at an 81. I got him going up to an 83. And I believe I had him on my stamina list as well. Let me check. No, I didn't. Um, I wonder why. Wait, you know what? I think actually his last couple starts, because I started to do some real analysis on this stamina thing, because I look at 68 and it doesn't feel right, but he is kind of a five inning guy. Um, you know, he's, he's got some sixes in there, but he's a five, six inning guy. He might be worth getting the three to five points of stamina, which could help. But if you really look at it, he's at 5.6 innings per start. Like that's not that special. And 68, um, it isn't too bad. League average, by the way, is 4.7 innings. So he's, he's you know, 0.9 better. It's not enough that I, I put him as like a must. I only listed, I, 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 there weren't a ton of guys. I listed 11 that I thought they really should give a second look to. But Freed did not actually make that cut, believe it or not. Because when I actually dug in, I had to be honest with myself and say, I don't really see it. I don't really see it. But anyway, I do have him going up to an 83 based on his skills alone. I also have a guy who recently went down, bouncing back up to 83, and maybe setting up a diamond, but he still needs to get that batting average up. It is Anthony Rizzo. He's been hot of late. Um, he faltered a bit. I remember the, the week that he got downgraded, people were asking if he would go up to diamond, and it didn't make any sense to me. And he's still hitting 225, so he might not even get this. He might only get like one point here. But I do think it is worth looking at because he has a 256, 376, 556 against righties. He still sucks against lefties, though. So I think he gets a point or two. But until he really goes off and gets back on track against lefties or just hits like 600 for two weeks against righties, he can't go to diamond. So I wouldn't really invest. I just wanted to bring him up because I've been getting questions about him on Twitter and in my chat, even though he's hitting 225. So hopefully I put that to bed. I'm not covering him again until he does something big. This guy, the ageless wonder. Robinson Cano, could he feasibly go to diamond this year? Is that possible? The answer is yes. Robinson Cano has been unbelievable for the Mets. And they have a few other unbelievable performances, but their pitching has just failed them at every turn health-wise, and that's why they're not a very good team. Um, but I look at him, and he's hitting 380, 414, 674. He has seven homers in 99 plate appearances. Robbie Cano does need another boost. I got him going up to an 83, and I think the major gains will come in power against both righties and lefties, where he has a 705 slug against righties and a 613 against lefties. Those numbers are fantastic. I got him going up to an 83. Now, for a handful of 84s, first off, the obvious one. We saw him hit three homers yesterday. 
Marcel Ozuna. I don't think it goes all the way to Diamond based off of that, although they've been so aggressive that I might be wrong. If I'm if I'm thinking about it now, the way they did it with like Abreu and Giolito, maybe the one signature excellent game is enough. So if you want to invest, do it now because, you know, if he goes, obviously if he goes, you, you don't have an opportunity. But even if he goes to 84, you know the price is going to shoot up. So if you if you believe that they could do it, get your shares now. Um, let me check his splits though, because you saw that inside edge there where he gets plus 13s and that only got him to an 84. So that's, that's probably why I'm a little bit tepid on him going directly to 85. Now he really needs his gains against lefty. Well, that's where he's getting them here because he has a 333, 471, 963 slug against lefties. He has five homers and 34 plate appearances against them. So that power is going to get a hell of a boost. The contact should go up a bit. He's hitting 284, 357, 510 against righties. That's still very good. A little bit of love there too. Problem is, I don't know if there's anything like the defense. They're not going to, they, they don't look at defense a ton within the year because it's hard to judge like day to day on defense. That's something that you need a larger sample to look at. And his, and his vision is not going up. If anything, it's going to go down. Yeah, that that's why I put him at an 84. Because I, I remember now looking at it. And I was like, he's going to get a boost. And he should. But Diamond might be tough. Because it, it has to be all offense. So, anyway. You make your decision there. Whether or not you want to invest in him. As you can see, I'm not really invested. Um, I might get a couple shares at 3,000. Or, or somewhere in the 29s. Just in case. But this guy, I stay loving him. Now, I've sold a bunch of shares off because his price was spiked the other night way up to about 3800 for Luke Voigt, and I thought that that was worth selling on because I do have him going up to an 84, and I do think that there is diamond potential this year, but profit's profit, y'all. After he went to gold, I, I quick sold all my shares. I got like 60 k for that. And then um, you know later in the week, I started buying them back in around the 1100 range, and so to sell them at, you know, three, 3,000 plus, that's a nice profit already. But he leads the league in home runs. He leads the American League in slugging at 701. There is still so much to like here with Luke Voigt. He's saying 337, 402, 669, 699 against righties. That contact against righties needs to go way up. The only problem with getting him to 85 that I can see right now is that they're going to have to lower his contact against lefties. He's only hitting 208. Now he has an 077 Babbitt, which the with with how well he's hitting this year, there's no way that's not bad luck. There's no way. There's just no way. An 077 is freaking insane for a Babbitt, which is batting average on balls in play, um, because five of his four hits are are homers. There's just no singles falling in. So hopefully they don't decline it too much. I'd say maybe five six points off of it, because you got to move it down a little bit, but they don't have to kill it but they can move the power up against righties and lefties. So a big contact boost against righties, a little contact downgrade against lefties, and then a power boost probably into the hundreds against both sides. And all of a sudden, Luke Voigt is knocking on the door of Diamond. Or, you know, you could just give him Tops Now or Player of the Month Diamond, and then I would shut up about it. Um, as far as his contact, his, his vision, I mean, um, he's, he's striking out 27%. That's what he did last year. That's not going to move. So it's all going to have to come in the core four, which are the two contact and two power numbers. If you don't remember when I talked about that before. Next up, Corey Seager, shortstop for the Dodgers. You can see the market's pretty keen on him already. There's not a ton of profit potential. So hopefully you're already invested. If this is somebody you like, I do have him going up to an 84. He's right there on the cusp. He's back. And, he, and he's hitting as well as ever. And I think it is going to be time for him to get back to Diamond this year. Now, I don't know if it's going to be this week or next, but it's going to be, I, I think it's going to happen. I feel, I feel pretty strongly about him going back to Diamond. He's hitting 311, 364, 598 on the year. Let me take a look at his splits because I, I didn't write any notes down on that. And if he's hitting well against lefties, then that's going to drive his ability to get to Diamond this week. He's not 209, 292, 326. So yeah, I think he goes to 84 right now, and then they kind of wait and see where he's at, because there's only so much heat you can put into the verse righties numbers. He does need an upgrade. I do have him for an upgrade, but I think I think Diamond is a little bit too high right now when he's such a platoon guy. And then one more. This is probably my favorite hold for Diamond, which I still haven't come up with a cool phrase for Diamond. Like we have save for silver, hold for gold. I don't have anything for Diamond. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty hot on Seth Lugo. 
first off, look at the price. It's such a low risk investment. Why not take a shot? Uh, you're just not risking that much for him to possibly go all the way up to diamond. Notice that they did not move him to SP this week, and I'll tell you why. It's because he would have gone diamond. And they didn't really want it to be artificial. By the way, to me, that's the same reason that Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is still listed at shortstop instead of going into left field because moving down the defensive scale would move his rating up. Like his numbers play it better as a left fielder than they do as a shortstop. There's higher thresholds for your defense, uh, the tougher your position is. So I think he's going to go to 84. And if he, if he keeps pitching well, by the way, he's starting now, if you, if you didn't catch what I, what I was saying there, um, but they didn't move him right, right into SP. But if he continues to start well, he has to go diamond. He went three, three perfect innings, his first start, uh, with five strikeouts against Miami. No, no hits, no walks, literally perfect. And then three and two-thirds with four hits, one run, two walks, and seven strikeouts at the Yankees um, on August 30th. So he's had two starts now that are not going long, so the stamina is fine, but the skills are off the charts, and he was an elite reliever before this. So I think he's earning diamond on his own merit, and then when you move him to SP, that's going to shoot him up another couple extra points just because of that transition uh, between the two. For some reason, moving RP to SP gets you a little point boost. So I think they put him 84 this week with a skills upgrade, and then if he has another good start or two, it's time to put him at diamond. By the way, Jesse Winker just swung through a John Gant pitch that made him fall on the ground. That alone should cost him gold. No, I'm just kidding. All right, a couple new diamonds for y'all. First up, he was on my stamina upgrade list, and he's actually the reason that I did it. I think Kenta Maeda absolutely needs a stamina boost because he's better than a 68. There's just no two ways around it at this point, and I don't know why they haven't uh, considered that. Now, I did ask, I asked uh, Luis at, at SDS, and he said that's, that's just not something. Oh, no, Tom Seaver passed away at 75. Oh, man, rest in peace. What a stud. Oh, that really stinks. Anyway, sorry, to, I just got the, the alert there, and I just, damn, that, that really sucks. 2020, you continue to be the fucking worst. Go fuck yourself. Uh, awkward transition back into this, I'm sorry, but, um, yeah, talking about Kenta Maeda, He's going much deeper in, in the starts regularly. You know, he's got a couple five-inning starts, uh, as anybody would this year. But he has six, six, six and two-thirds, eight, and six. It's better than a 68. That, that, that's all there is to it. And the skills have been off the charts. He leads baseball with a .75 whip. So I think the hits nine and K9 and BB9 all need some love. It's time for Kenta Maeda Diamond. And then our second diamond that I'm going to give you all, our last one for this there are a couple more if you subscribe to the uh, Twitch channel, though. Our second diamond here, the market's already there on Paul Goldschmidt. We thought he was going to get it last week. He didn't. He has not done anything to deter me from thinking that he's going to get it this week, though. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time because if you're not invested, it is too late. But I did want to just bring up that I do see Paul Goldschmidt getting it this week. Now, I have a group of diamond to diamond guys that I want to talk about because they can set up the next guys who could go into the 90 range, which could give them a price boost. So there are investment opportunities here. Let's start with the legend, Clayton Kershaw. Now, I've only got him going to 87 this week, but if he continues to pitch the way we've seen this year, then there's no reason he can't boost back up into the 90 range. And what that does is it makes him a, a rare diamond. It's, it's 85 to 89 is, is a more common diamond, and the 90 plus are the rarer ones. And so their price goes up. We saw what happened with Mookie Betts. We saw what happened with Aaron Judge. You guys have heard me talk about this multiple times. But his strikeouts are up. His walks are down. His hits are way down. So I think that the hits and Ks need to go into the 80s and then the, the walks could actually go to 85 plus. So I think he should go 87, 88 area and set up that if he continues pitching this well, back into the 90 range. And with this, again, it's, it's I don't want to say no risk because no risk would be if you only paid 5,000 for him, then you quick sold and you get all your money back. But when you're investing, say, say you buy a bunch for like 5,800, you're basically risking 800 stubs and, and not even the full 800 because if, if he doesn't get to the 90 plus, you can still sell him back at 58 something, um, you know, which would then you take off the tax. You, you're going to lose a few stubs there, but it's a small risk for a potential big payoff because here's the thing. We saw bets when he got up to 92, he spiked to 40 K. So if you were there on investment day or on upgrade day, 
you could sell real quick. But even if you weren't, say you had to work and you know you got back later that night, but you bought a bunch at 5,000. If you're selling them at this price, that's still profit. So there's profit to be had on these guys who become new 90s. Another one who just got to diamond, so he's not gonna get to 90 just yet, but he just continues to rake, is Trey Turner. He's killing it. And you can see right here, you can't actually get him for sub 5,000. These are just old orders that are now being fulfilled and, and so, by the way, College Lefty had a great video on this. If you think somebody's going to get upgraded and you think that they're like a guarantee for the week, you can go put in a bunch of orders for them at sub, uh, sub quick sell price. Let's say Luis Robert. Put in a bunch of orders at, I don't know, 600 and just leave them there. Over the course of time here, his quick sell price or his sell now price because quick sell is still a thousand that, that's when you go in and say quick sell these I, I don't like when people use the words interchangeably his sell now price will trickle down i'm going to go look at somebody real quick see if he's still there to show you the example michael conforto is back up okay but he was the guy he was a gold you know what there's problem well actually i mean turner turner shows it it's a diamond but uh, it works for diamonds gold it doesn't matter but turner shows it these orders get fulfilled so somebody has 23 orders at 3069. People are going to sell him those, and then he flips them back for 5Gs. He makes 2G profit. It's genius. So shouts to College Lefty for doing that. That's a great call out. So you can go choose players that you want to do that. But now if you want to put in orders for him, you have to pay 5000 So this is a no-risk one. Now, it's going to take him a while to get to 90 plus, and he might get there at the very end of the season because we're running out of time. But I do have him going up to an 87 now, which should that alone should raise his price a bit, though. He'll probably move into the 6 7 range. So you, you can even make a little profit off this right now by buying some at 5,000. But there is a chance that if he continues to crush for the next two, three weeks, that he could go 90 plus. Now, I have three guys who I think will go into the 90s this week. So this is the week to have them first. Juan Soto, the dude just doesn't stop. He's he's tearing the cover off the ball. I feel like you should pretty much intentionally walk him the second he comes up these days because he's so difficult to face. He leads the league in slugging and OPS at 774 and 1219 respectively. He is just killing it. And he's hitting 355 against both righties and lefties. He has a 742 slug against righties and an 839 against lefties. He needs a big boost. I got him going up to a 91. And he is damn near no risk. You buy a bunch now at 51 something, 52 something, whatever. I have 10, and I bought these all in this same price range. The worst case is it doesn't work, and I sell them at 6,000. So I'm already going to make a profit, but I have a chance to hit really big here. So I'm excited for that. Next up is the guy who's been upgraded all year. And I'm actually surprised he's not higher because he's been one of the best players in the league. Now, there is a little bit of risk here. Um, as far as, you, you know, you can't just quick sell these if it doesn't work out. But 6600 is not a crazy price for him. And you can see here that this 75 is a rogue one. Otherwise, you can sell him in the low 8000s, high 7000s. So you can still make your stubs back there. But if he does, in fact, go to 91, which is where I have him, the price is going to shoot way up. Because not only will he be a rare diamond, but for those that haven't used Tatis this year, he kills. His card's awesome. We saw what happened with that face of the franchise when they boosted it up to a 99. Well, the standard face of the franchise rakes too. He's leading the league in a bunch of categories. Now, they're not all categories that we care about for uh, MLB The Show, like runs and ribbies. That doesn't matter. But he does lead the league in homers with 13. Uh, he has the most not total bases at 97. He's hitting 313, 395, 660. Let's take a look at his splits real quick. He's, I think he's killing lefties. Oh, wait, no, he's actually not. It's the reverse. He has an 1108 OPS against righties and an 874 against lefties, which isn't bad. He's just not killing them the way I thought he was, but it's, it's reversed. Uh, but either way, I think he goes up to at least 90, if not 91, which is where I actually have him. As long as he hits that 90 threshold, though, the price will go up. And then, of course, I had to back out one more time for old time's sake. I got Shane Bieber going up to the 91 marker as well. He might even go 92. I mean, this guy's been so dumb this year, like with how good he's been. It's incredible. Um, he's got the league lead in strikeout rate at 14.4. He only has 2.2 walks per nine, and he leads the American League with 5.1 hits per nine. So that's where the biggest boost is going to come. But I think the Ks need to go up again, and I think the walks need to go up again. And I think it's time that Bieber gets to 90, 91, uh, or 92. 
and you can see there is a little risk because again you got to you got to pay well the risk is only that if you get a bunch of shares and he doesn't go there then you have to put in sell orders for them that's the risk there's not really a financial risk though because if i sell these right now even as low as like eight thousand i'm getting 7200 you'd still clear 200 stubs based on the price that you're paying or about 100 uh you break even let's call it that you know no one's doing backflips for two and that's if but that's if the price comes down if it stays where it's at right now then you're fine you know i put them in at 8825 you even make a few hundred. So anyway, there's not too much risk with these guys. Everyone likes the level changers, and I do too. They're great. But the market's really keen on them, so we have to find new ways to invest and make stubs. And I think the guys going from high 80s to low 90s is a, a uh, I don't want to say hidden market, but it's a less sought-after market, mainly because you have to have a bankroll to do it too. Because you don't want to be putting all your stubs into something like that. So if you do it, you have to have a, a big enough bankroll that you can still, you know, freely buy packs and cards and play BR, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyway, there they are. There's the names for the week. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you're watching this on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday night, I'll be streaming twitch.tv slash spore uh, I mean, if you're watching on Thursday night, I will be too because I'm streaming right as the update comes out. But start investing. You can make a lot of stubs. We don't have that much time left. You want to make a lot of stubs for the fall and winter content. Affinities are coming up again. You're going to want to, do, if you're somebody who likes to do the exchanges instead of playing showdown, you're going to want to have a lot of these cards that you can buy cheaply at one price and watch their affinity price go way up and you get that gain that way. That's another way to save stubs. So thank you so much for watching. Hit a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and come out to the Twitch. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much.